what needs to be in place to get started with an extended grazing system? And there's several things that really need to be in place. And, and the first one is, is not something you can buy. It's, it's your attitude. So don't, don't extend your grazing system if you don't want to. You've got to want to do it. Don't do it because Les tells you to do it or I tell you to do it or your NRCS person tells you to do it. You've got to want to do it. If you go into this and say, well, this is never going to work, you know, what's the chances of being successful? Pretty, pretty slim. And, and you are going to have problems and you're going to have too much rain and not enough rain and, and this and that. But, but if you've got the right attitude, you just kind of find your way around those problems. And, and so attitude is absolutely critical. Do it because you want to do it. You got to have some kind of controlled grazing system in place. We also call these rotational stocking systems, management intensive grazing systems, but somehow you've got to be able to control grazing and, and water's key to that. In these NRCS programs that were talked about this morning, that's probably the most important part of those NRCS programs is getting water in pasture so that we can manage grazing. And, and, and NRCS has some great programs, especially for, for beginning farmers. Um, with controlled grazing, we're managing two things. We're managing residual height of that pasture, and, and that's a whole nother topic, but we're managing how close those animals graze that pasture, and then we're managing how long those pastures are rested between grazing events. And that can dramatically impact the productivity of that pasture. When we switch from a continuous to a rotational stocking system, we're gonna increase productivity on average about 30%. So that's a huge switch a uh, huge increase in productivity just due to a management switch. We also increase um, the drought tolerance of pastures, and we don't talk enough about this, but what we do to the top of that plant impacts what's below the soil. So when we gr overgraze the top of the plant, we're reducing the size of that root system below the soil. And, and when we do that, that plant becomes more susceptible to drought stress. One of the first things that people notice when they switch from a, a continuous to rotational stocking system is that pastures tend to grow longer into drought stresses and come out of drought stresses faster. And that's a really important aspect of rotational stocking that we don't spend enough time talking about. Uh, the, the other thing that rotational stocking does is increase uh, nutrient cycling within pastures. So we're leaving some residue for, for the microbes in the soil to work on. Um, and we're also creating habitat for those microbes by not grazing the pasture down to the soil surface. And we're also getting an improved distribution of dung and urine within that pasture. So when we subdivide one big pasture into smaller pieces, we get a more uniform deposition of dung and urine within that grazing system. And that's really a resource within the grazing system that we don't talk enough about. But, but grazing management has a big impact on how well, how well we distribute that resource. The other thing that we can do with uh, controlled grazing is manage botanical composition, and that means the plants that are dominant in that sward. Rotational stocking is really a powerful tool in terms of managing the, the, um, the, the botanical composition of pastures. How close we graze it and how long we rest it between grazing events can have a big impact on what grasses or legumes are dominant within that, that pasture. A lot of times we'll see pastures um, cool season pastures that are mixes of tall growing grasses like orchard grass or tall fescue that are, have been grazed really closely. And they tend to be dominated by a, a low growing white clover. Well, that white clover can tolerate that close and frequent grazing when the tall growing grasses cannot. And it becomes dominant in that sward. And the grasses tend to fade out of that sward. By raising the grazing height, we can shift that, that sward balance back towards those tall growing grasses. So it's really quite a powerful tool in terms of maintaining botanical composition. And that's a whole nother lecture also um, on forage plant growth and grazing management. And I always tell people when they think about setting up a rotational stocking system, um, it's got to fit what you want to do. So, so maybe you don't want to rotate animals every two days, and that's okay. You set up a system that kind of fits your wants and needs. And that's really important. And it's important you build flexibility into that system. So don't think about what you want to do, just about what you want to do tomorrow, but think about what you might want to do six months or a year or two years down the road. And think about, well, if I'm going to install waters, and in two years I want to subdivide this pasture into four pieces, where do I put that water at? And it may change the location of that water as you move forward.
I don't like to quote myself, but this was kind of a good quote that Kerry Brown pulled out. This was for an article for our Cattleman's paper in um, Kentucky, and it was on implementing rotational stocking. And, and I guess it slow, shows that I'm kind of a slow learner, because it says, after almost two decades of attending and teaching grazing schools, it finally dawned on me, we make rotational stocking too hard. And, and, and we do that sometimes, and that's important to remember. You know, we, we go to a producer that doesn't have a rotational stocking system and we start drawing on maps and we tell them to put in miles of water line and miles of new fence and, and all of a sudden they're like, whoa, I don't think this is for me. And, and uh, really, in, in reality, most farms can have a rotational stocking system just by closing some gates. And, and that's important to realize. Just closing gates and all of a sudden you've got three or four paddocks and you can rest one and graze another one. And then, and then over time, you'll start to see the benefits of that. And next thing you know, well, maybe I need a water here, so I'll install a water or install a cross fence or put up a piece of temporary fencing. But, but just getting started is the important part. And, and just closing some gates can, can really make a big impact and in, in implement rotational stocking, even a very simple system to get started. So if you all have questions, please, please ask them. All right, the next thing in terms of getting started with an extended grazing season is soil fertility. And, and this is really, really important. We, we can't make something out of nothing. If we don't have good soil fertility to start with, we're kind of behind the eight ball. So what we want to do is we want to start at a reasonable level of soil fertility. And, and that base level is really important in implementing an extended grazing system. And generally speaking, one to be in the, the medium, um, to medium plus uh, soil test range. And we want to have a pH of 6 to 6.4, and that's going to encourage improved legumes in our pastures. And then again, we need to remember that, that when animals graze in a grazing system, one of the most beautiful things about the grazing system is that the, they redeposit, you know, 80 to 90 percent of the nutrients that go in the front end of the animal come out the back end. And that's really important, and we need to think about how we manage those deposited nutrients in the term in terms of uh, dung and urine on those grazing systems. And that, again, that's where rotational stocking comes in. Next thing we need to do is set a sustainable stocking rate. And, and that's really, really important. I can't emphasize that enough. If we don't have the right stocking rate set, and the stocking rate is the number of animals uh, over uh, the entire grazing season, we don't have that right, then the system, whole system is going to crash and burn if it's too high. We won't be able to supply forage and animal performance will decrease. And our production costs will go up because we're going to have to import feed into that grazing system. If we have it too low, then we tend to lose money because we're not optimizing animals per unit land area. Um, so, so what's optimum? You know, in, in my experience in this part of the country, w when we think about a stocking rate for a cow-calf operation, we need to be somewhere between two to three acres per cow-calf unit. And, and if and I always encourage people to start at a little bit lighter stocking rate, um, and then you can start to build it up over time. So if you start with three acres per cow-calf unit, you're going to be able to, to have the opportunity to extend that grazing season. As your grazing management improves and your pasture productivity improves, then you can start to, to increase that stocking rate uh, towards two and a half or, or a little over two acres per cow-calf unit. <clears throat> 